Today we are discussing ER Studio macros and how they are used. Before we proceed, let's catch up on a few things to know about macros. Macros are automated scripts, ran through a scheduled task or executed when you see fit. You can create macros to automate repetitive tasks or to extend the functions already found in your application. A few days coding can save months of human resources in the end and can assist in streamlining your task at hand. Macros are programmable. The package macros written in ER Studio are written in a language similar to Visual Basic known as WinRap. Macros can be event driven, meaning certain actions can trigger automated tasks. ER Studio itself is based on COM, or Component Object Model, which enables software components to communicate with each other. COM provides an interface with ER Studio objects so that you can use them in different programming languages, including integrations with Delphi, C Sharp, C++, VB.NET, and others. So you do not need to know one specific coding language. The main purpose of this video is to show how to use the built-in macro editor to demonstrate some of the package macro functionalities, along with editing them to fit your custom needs. With ER Studio Data Architect open, from the bottom left you will notice the macros tab, along with the list of our packaged macros. Please review our online documentation for more information. I have the ability to create new macros, edit, save a copy, even create new folders to help better organize my edits. These can also be edited using third-party applications, such as Notepad++. But for the purposes of this demo, we are going to stick with the built-in editor. Notice that when we open these to edit, the debug information and comments are located at the top. Just to give you more details as to what that macro does, along with some of the variables. Let us look at a few useful examples. Let's take a quick look at one of the CAN macros that can be used to help identify entities with foreign keys. Here I have created a submodel, which is comprised of the entirety of the model. This can be used as an identifying submodel that users can use to target entities with foreign keys and make changes accordingly. If you are not satisfied with the purple color selection, a simple edit of the color code will make all the difference in the world. Notice none of the coloring is done on the main model or any of the submodels, just the model that we selected. Entity creation can be tedious, so utilizing macros can help circumvent a lot of that frustration and monotonous work. So here we're going to be using a few of the available macros, along with a couple available from the IDERA community site. Visit us at community.idera.com. Here you can see we have a blank, brand new diagram. To get me started, I'm going to stamp a few entities. Now I want to create some reusable columns, ID, name, and date and time, as they will be related to our attributes. Here we can see a post for a custom plumbing macro, available off the IDEA community site. This post contains code for two different macros. The first will be used to create reusable columns. The second to create an entity foundation. A simple copy, create, paste, and run gives us the reusable columns we need to create our entity base, as seen in the data dictionary here. Now that this is complete, we will enable the basic plumbing for the purposes of data and schema change management. I have taken the same steps and created a create plumbing macro and ran it. As you can see, all the previously blank entities now have owner, creation, and modification information. Let's roll with this and utilize the person entity macro to add base attributes which represent people. Since one is not available, let us auto create a basic data dictionary. Comments of the dictionary can be found in the macro auto create data dictionary. With the previously edited entities, let us now run the macro which will both add the plumbing base along with the primary key, first name, and last name. Attributes can be easily manipulated and added. Here we're going to add middle name and alias. With the base attribute to person macro open, let's scroll down towards the bottom. Here we can see the code to create attributes, along with the comments on what is being created. 
I will simply copy the highlighted snippet and paste and format accordingly. I can then change the attribute comment to reflect this snippet and its reference to middle name, and then make the same change to add attribute command. The same steps will be applied to the new alias attribute I want to add. Now we can see middle name and alias, which were not generated previously. ER Studio offers an option that allows users to export metadata information in a convenient format, such as Excel or Word. Let's run Export Metadata to Excel 2.1. Let us select all and deselect anything from physical table properties. For now, I just want to generate model information from tables and attributes in my logical model. As you can see, I have exported some basic model metadata, including entities, attributes, definitions, and other metadata for a simple list view of what is developed in my data model. And as we have seen previously, these macros too can be edited and formed to fit your needs. If you have any questions, please review our doc wiki, visit our website at www.idera.com or email sales at idera.com.